Yeah, yeah. You already know this trope. The MC belongs to a party. He gets yeeted out because he's weak. Then his girlfriend ditches him for the party's tall and handsome leader, Zekt, who's got it all, including a huge... And it starts... Wait, hold up. And it starts pouring rain for that extra drizzle of dramatic effect. So what else can our boy do to continue the manga but to get all John Wick on us and bang? Wait a second, you guys. Don't unzip just yet. Give me 10 seconds to explain the manga's background because it's kind of important. Our boy, Ceres, is actually a middle-aged man who got isekai'd into this realm as a young boy. And in this world he's in, people live until the age of 50. So women are considered old by the time they reach 17. By their mid-twenties, no one even looks at them. So it's pretty much a world where everyone is Leo. Well, except for our boy Ceres, of course. He's considered a gilf in this world, which stands for Grandma I'd like to... Now, let's get back to the story, shall we? After Ceres gets kicked out of his party, he goes to bang on the doors of this fine establishment. He's greeted by a gentleman who is kindly providing shelter to some very respectable ladies. And who else does our boy come across but Zek's mother, Shizuko? By the way, Shizuko is Siri's first love, which kind of makes you wonder who's the bigger trash here. I mean, isn't he a middle-aged man? Maybe Zek was right to kick him out. Anyway, Siri's pays the kind man eight silver coins to get her out, which in this world is less than the cost of a filet o fish meal. It makes sense, though, considering Shizuko is 30 years old, which makes her ancient. So not even halfway through Chapter 1, Zekt's mom already belongs to Ceres now, as the mark on her arm rightfully indicates. But there are lots of nice and thick plots up ahead, so get ready, you guys. Before we continue the story, though, let's get a more appropriate attire for Shizuko in order to please the YouTube overlords. There we go. Here they are sitting on a park bench. Our boy Ceres gets a nice and thick meat skewer and gently puts it towards Shizuko's face. Now, for those of us who paid attention in English class, we know this is called a foreshadowing. That water fountain might also be considered one. Anyway, Shizuko kneels down to express her gratitude for saving her old and wretched life. And as she promises her devotion to her master, she cries uncontrollably at her own pity party. Ceres kneels down too in order to calm her ass down. When she finally gets it together, she reveals to us her backstory. You see, she got sold out by none other than her husband. He was spending their retirement savings on some very respectable girls instead of listening to Shizuko's sage-like advice of YOLOing into Bitcoin before the next halving. And having witnessed Bitcoin hit an all-time high this week, her husband got so shook that he sold her to the gentleman of the fine establishment we saw earlier. What a boring story. I mean, what a tragic story, Ceres remarks sorrowfully. He apologizes for bringing up such painful memories. Shizuko says everything is daijoubu which means Mei Guan Shi in Chinese. In fact, she smiles while admitting how happy she is that he bought her. Our boy blushes at her beauty, and also from thinking about how he's going to spend the next two chapters mercilessly clapping her cheeks. But for now, we still have some pages left in this chapter, so let's do a little flashback down Siri's memory lane this time. You see, Zekt was his childhood friend, so Siri's knew Shizuko since he was a little boy. And while it all seems innocent, we know that there's a middle-aged man in that boy's body having all sorts of middle-aged desires to place his bratwurst in between her jiggly puffs. And that's pretty much all we get of Ceres' flashback. So back to the present moment. Now that he's all grown up and girthier, Ceres proposes that Shizuko should be his lover. But remember how women above the age of 25 in this world are considered elderly? So Shizuko resists at first, thinking he's just being silly. But that would ruin this manga's only plot, so Ceres desperately insists he's serious about his confession. Eventually, Shizuko relents and agrees to be his lover, but only until he finds a girl he likes. And so begins their most appropriate relationship. Will it pan out to be a revenge story or a love story? Don't go anywhere because you're about to find out. Now you probably expected to immediately hear some cheek clapping noises, but no. I actually lied about what this manga is about. Okay, the truth is, she cried all night so Ceres couldn't even attempt to get cultural. They went as far as holding hands, but that's literally all he got. What a waste of eight silver coins, but anyway, the next morning they go out for breakfast to a place serving the most delicious black and white food. Shizuko finds the food really oishi, which means it's f***ing delicious. 
Meanwhile, Ceres is sitting there smiling, this time thinking about how he's soon going to turn this manga into a harem. Starting with Zekt's mom, then moving on to the rest of his former party members' moms. It's going to be fantastic. He simply can't wait to arrange them eight cheeks like a Yamaha drum kit and make music all night long. But for now, he's got to keep it together and deal with some administrative matters. Upon signing up to form a new party, the NPC immediately gets an attitude and questions Shizuko's age, bringing a nice elderly smile to her face. And it turns out Shizuko was an adventurer before. In fact, she gets recognized by this gym bro. They do some catching up, as if they've known each other for a long time. A little too well, if you ask Ceres. Maybe he's Zek's real father. Anyway, the gym bro calls her the black-haired healer, which reveals just how creative this manga's author is. And it turns out, the black-haired healer is stronger than Snorlax on steroids. So then how did someone so strong end up being sold in a cage? We'll get to that, but first, let's find out about their quest. Without hesitation, Shizuko suggests the two take on the difficult quest of slaying a dragon. The NPC starts rolling her eyes, claiming that earth dragons are the weakest of all dragons, as if she could even take on a slime. But enough about her. Ceres worries for Shizuko's safety. So he allows her to join, under the condition that he fights alone while she stays back. She agrees, and they head back to their abode so she can make them some yummy lunch before their super exciting quest. On their way back, Shizuko explains about her tragic past, back when she and the rest of the drum kit were all in the same party. They used to be K-pop stars, but as one does, they got old eventually. Not even monsters wanted anything to do with their saggy geriatric asses, so they had to disband their girl group to become ordinary housewives afterwards. And I said I'd explain how Shizuko ended up in a cage, right? It turns out her husband snuck up on her and used a tranquilizer. So she vows that the next time she's in the same panel as him, she'll paint the panel after in a shade of black that's supposed to resemble the color red. Anyway, it's lunchtime, so open wide. Ceres devours the food, which is another foreshadow of how he's later going to devour something else of hers. But let's not get ahead of ourselves here because look, you guys. Oh my god, that must be the earth dragon. And just look at how swole he is. Ceres deftly dodges the dragon's swole attack, which is rather slow because he's so swole. Unimpressed, Ceres enchants his sword with his wind magic and then one-shots the dragon like an incredible G. That was super cool, he thinks to himself. Ceres strikes a victory pose to celebrate, but holy shit, look out again. This time it's some sort of rock dragon. And gee whiz, that thing can shoot a giant flame out its mouth. Ceres tries to block the flame attack with his sword, which is just really stupid if you think about it. So Shizuko steps in to save the main character of this manga before he gets barbecued. Oh no, isn't that the rock dragon? I heard it's super strong, Ceres worries out loud. Then, right after saying that, he obliterates the dragon with one blow like the biggest show-off ever. But that's not enough to fill the German tank that is his ego. So he pretentiously shows off the dragon's heads to everyone at the guild. The gym bro gets impressed and asks Ceres how he managed to defeat such a formidable monster. In response, Ceres says he just clicked jump then attack to humbly downplay just how amazing he was. Because being strong just isn't enough. He wants to be known as modest, too. Anyway, Ceres and Shizuko head back home after to properly celebrate their first successful quest. But not before he berates her for disobeying his orders, claiming he was totally going to deflect the flame attack with his sword like a G. Besides, he's not a child anymore, so he's going to be the one to protect her. Later at home, Shizuko starts getting antsy about the long-awaited cultural festival finally about to take place. Still, she remains doubtful that Ceres was serious about his confession. Surely he was feeling just lonely. He's probably just volunteering his time to take care of an elderly lady so he can write that on his resume. Meanwhile, here's our boy coming back home to Shizuko with a little gift in his hand. He hurries home to see Shizuko as soon as possible because he's finally about to surprise her all right. But Ceres is also a patient man, so he's going to take it slow and spend the next few chapters on the upcoming scene because it's absolutely essential to this manga's plot. First, he gets things going verbally, showering Shizuko with flattery to get her all worked up. Afterwards, 
he presents her with his big and long bouquet of flowers. The cartoonish size of this bouquet probably symbolizes the sheer girth of what he's about to unveil next. His thoughtful gesture brings joy to Shizuko's cheeks, but it's not time to kick off the cultural fest just yet. First, they're going to go for a little walk. By the riverside, Ceres takes out his other gift, a shiny and pearly set of balls, shaped jewelry. How'd he get those in there? Anyway, she can't accept such a gift. Not from a handsome young man like Ceres. Is he really sure about this? Without hesitation, Ceres reaffirms his love for Shizuko. But she drags this scene a little longer, still feeling unsure and undeserving of his love. So he insists he loves her, desperately wanting to get to the next scene. But for fuck's sake, Shizuko repeats the damn scene, as if they're in a loop. So this time, Ceres tightly embraces her to shut her up. That's how finally she gives in and wears the necklace as a gesture of accepting his love. At last, here we are, boys. She's come out of the shower all clean for now, but you know she's going to need another shower real soon. Unfortunately, their Airbnb comes only with one bathroom, so Ceres goes in next to scrub his so clean that you could eat off of it. And eat it, she shall. They clap until there's more of his yoke in her than in his sack. Only the morning sun is able to remind them to stop their activity and resume the manga's story. At this point, you're probably thinking this manga's only plot has been resolved in three chapters. So is it over? No, series ain't no quitter. Okay, so now what? Well, we learn that Shizuko is an S-rank adventurer, and there are less than 30 people in the world with that rank. Now she wants to go pay her ex-husband a visit and get her revenge, but our boy has other business plans. He now wants to expand the franchise and meet the other moms who all live in the village he grew up in. And these ladies are all dissatisfied with their lives. Haruka is working as a server making $4 an hour. Sayo is symbolically caressing a broomstick outside. Lastly, Misaki works at a dollar store, suffering from back pain because those jugs must weigh at least a plate each. Oh, those poor girls. Ceres can't wait to meet them. Oh, he's gonna meet them all right. They're gonna meet his meat real soon. He's gonna meet and greet them with his meat. But for now, let's go check out how Ceres' ex-party members are doing. There's Zekt, his ex, and the other two side characters. And while I'm no orthopedic surgeon, they clearly don't have any spinal issues. Anyway, these guys are basically broke. And they don't even have receipts to collect their pay because Ceres has them with him. What they have remaining are four silver coins which isn't even enough for a filet of fish meal. So they end up surviving on whatever this abomination is. But they eventually run out of that goop too and end up on the streets. Well, things can't get any worse, right? I mean, at least his mom isn't getting plowed by his childhood friend or anything. Oh, don't worry, Zekt, because she's having the time of her life. In fact, she's never been happier getting fat during the day, then burning off all those calories through the rhythmic clapping of her cheeks in the evening. She's so happy she can't help herself but break out into a spontaneous dance. And you know what? If her son and Ceres were in danger, you bet your sweet ass that she's saving Ceres without a moment of hesitation. In fact, bro, not only is Ceres ruining your mother's innards, they're getting married, and you're not even invited. Now, does this mean the manga is over? Far from it, you guys. There are even thicker plots up ahead of us, and Shizuko doesn't mind sharing as long as she gets first dibs. That, my dear viewers, marks the end of Chapter 5. As always, thanks for watching. Love you guys. Bye.